Coming up on Meet the Drapers. You get this accurate digital system that's going to save you $600 to $1,200 per year off your water bill. And the good news is we're the only ones selling anything to them. Combining nutritional information with health metrics at the in-home dog level is game-changing. We're funding heroes, heroes. Welcome to Meet the Drapers. I'm Tim Draper. This is my father, Bill Draper, my sister, Polly Draper. We are here to create the next generation of startup heroes. Every week, three heroes pitch their game-changing ideas to us. We choose one winner to move to the playoffs. Three heroes of our choice then move to the finals. But here's the big twist. You, the viewers, can invest with us in these companies. The three heroes that you fund the most will also move move to the finals where they'll battle it off for half a million dollars. The power is now in your hands. Welcome back to Meet the Drapers. We are now in episode five of season four. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you, audience. It keeps growing. We love having more people out there viewing and potentially investing in these companies. You go to meetthedrapers.com if you like one of these entrepreneurs and you can select them and you can fund the company. So today we're gonna hear from three heroes, three entrepreneurs who are doing extraordinary things to make your world a better place. And I'm here with my father, Bill Draper, who was one of the pioneers of venture capital and my sister, Polly Draper is, a, is an actress, director, writer, producer. Welcome, Dad. Welcome, Polly. Great to have you on the show. And we have two guest judges today. One, Azra is the executive director of Draper University. And our other guest judge, Anant Agarwal, founder and CEO of edX. And we're working uh, with edX because we have this hit with Draper University Online. And so what I thought we'd start talking about is education. And maybe we can ask you, Anant, what is going on in education? You've been at edX for many years. You've done something really extraordinary. You're one of maybe four or five major online programs. First of all, uh, I'm really delighted to be on the show. Uh, what was interesting about education was, well, you know, before seven or eight years ago, nothing was happening. And so what we've been trying to do is apply digital technology to education and truly make it what it should be, a human right. Asra, what do you think about education? What, what's going on at Draper University? So with Draper University, we are on a mission to empower entrepreneurs and really ignite that entrepreneurial spirit in the youth leaders of the future. And traditionally, we have our flagship program, which happens in San Mateo, which is called our Hero Training Program. We launched an online program given the market. And interestingly, we have seen a huge demand for it and also have been able to get in front of a lot more entrepreneurs and fund them at a much much earlier stage. So very exciting times are in education in general. With that, uh, let's get to a few of our entrepreneurs. I believe some of these are education entrepreneurs. But before we do, let's see what's happening behind the scenes. I live in California and I have two kids. And the water, if you look at the difference in the water from 10 years ago to today, you can see that we're in a drought. And the idea of leaving California for my kids in a much worse place on water where you can't use as much, there's no green plants, just didn't make sense to me. So having that mission, having that ability to wake up every morning and go work on an engineering problem that has the ability to save trillions of gallons of water, not just in my state, but across the world. You know, South Africa, the taps are just about to run out last year. So this is a huge, huge problem. And to get up and apply engineering and ingenuity and great business models to solve this, you know, just means that you know, going to work is almost like play. Well, this really secures our future. That's something that's really close to my heart where I get to work on something that's not only an exciting business and is gonna make a lot of money, but also something that's gonna actually change the world for, you know, for the better.
All right, let's hear from our first entrepreneur, Shane with Era Green. Give us your pitch. Hey, I'm Shane. I'm the CEO at Era Green. Uh, we make internet connected digital sprinkler systems that save 50% of the water in the landscape irrigation market. So the landscape automation market is growing to about $9 billion per year annually, and there's about 80 million lawns in the US. Right now, most people don't know that over 50% of our drinking water is used outside on the plants that we love. However, those plants themselves, like 42% of that water is actually wasted. Doesn't help a darn plant grow. So that's about 80,000 gallons or about $600, $1,200 per year of waste. That's like a Comcast cable bill of waste ready, waiting for somebody to come pick up. This is a mechanical sprinkler where we use gizmos and springs, and we're going to disrupt this with software. They're bad for the reasons that you see when you go out for a jog or you uh, walk out in the morning, you see it spraying, running down your driveway in the street. But most of the waste is actually hidden below the surface. So if you have like a square lawn like this with four sprinklers in the corner, only those little tiny green strips are being watered efficiently. Everything else, the sprinklers have to overlap in order to reach all the area. And in the center of that overlap, you've got almost 200% waste. It's not even healthy for the grass. So this is where we come in. This is a digital print head for water. So it puts water exactly where you want it and not where you don't. It puts it down in a completely even distribution and the whole thing is controlled from your phone. So you can draw any pattern you want that you wanted to irrigate. That gives you basically the same green lawn you have, but you're saving about 50% of the water. And that means you're, you know, you're literally saving thousands on your water bill. With Irrigreen, you get this accurate digital system that's going to save you $600 to $1,200 per year off your water bill. But what I like about it is it's not just a uh, more efficient system, it also vastly simplifies irrigation. So instead of having 40 mechanical heads, you can only need uh, five digital heads with Irrigreen, which means 80% of the piping goes away, all the valves go away, and you're left with a far simpler system. There's software in this particular box that prints that water out in that pattern. This is connected to our digital controller that we make, and then we connect it up to our cloud where we bring in weather data from IBM and the weather company, compute optimal watering, and then bring that down. And the whole thing is tied together with our app that shows you not only that you're saving water, but exactly where you're using it and where you can save more. Terrific. Well, Shane, um, I'm not really a golfer, but I, I walked a golf course in Nebraska and uh, the winds were like 30 miles an hour. And I thought of you because the winds uh, were blowing the water into the sand traps and away from and out into the prairie and away from the green. And I was thinking, well, it, is there a way to do this? Now, you said you ma manage weather data. Does that include wind or are you just uh, figuring out when it rains? So we can do like a wind delay, just like we do a water delay. So if it's too windy, we can not start up. Obviously, where we'd like to go with this and what's even better is compensating for some wind on site because we can in real time modulate how, how far we're throwing the streams. Questions from the rest of the judges? Do you have to start from scratch? Like if you already have a lawn in place with a bunch of old time sprinklers, you have to rip up everything and start all over. It turns out that about 87% of our business is retrofit. So there's a lot of parts of that system that we use when we put in the new system. But my question for you is that, are you able to look at current conditions? So let's say, for example, if there is, uh, if the ground is really wet, for example, in certain areas, uh, are you able to put in IoT sensors, for example, in the ground or to measure the wind, as was discussed earlier, and change it on the fly? It seems to me you need some dynamic mechanisms like that versus a completely static system. How are you thinking about that? There's a water balance, so it can it takes that water balance and it brings it along. So if you've had rain or the soil's already wet, it won't water for a period of time until you've used that up and the water and the soil needs water again. Are all of your systems installed in California or are there other places? No, we opened up three markets. We picked California, Denver, and Austin, Texas. Those are the three we opened up on right now. And by far the one we've got the most installs in right now is actually Denver, Colorado. So as somebody who can not keep even a small plant or a inch of grass alive, 
how far are you guys from completely automating the system? Because we've got a digital sprinkler head, we can do what nobody else in the industry can do, which is you put it in, you answer questions like how shady is it and what kind of plants do you have there? And based on those two questions and the weather data, we can put the optimal water on that area without you ever having to touch it. How much uh, does the, uh, the average lawn is not going to be a very expensive sale. And it sounds like a lot of sales cost to you to go door to door. And so tell me about that. We're B2B, so we go through the landscape channel. We have a direct piece that kind of it turbocharges that, but the, each of these guys already has an existing book of, you know, a hundred, a hundred or so systems that they put in per year. So once we I infect see. that distributor, they have the ability to go in and, and they make much more money installing us versus oh, a regular system because it's about a third the labor. Terrific. Shane, thank you so much for coming and being on Meet the Drapers. All right, heroes! <laughs> Terrific. So what did everybody think? I want it in my house. I want it tomorrow. I want to help them improve it. Frankly, if something exists, I believe in digitizing it. And, and this is great. I think they've done a great job. Uh, they've, they've got an excellent product. I second that. I, I want to get whatever the info is so I can do it at my house. Because it's the sprinkler system is the bane of my existence at that house. <laughs> I think it's a much needed product. I would buy it tomorrow, but I'm still as a business, a bit conflicting on conflicted on their business model because this D2C model is going to cost them a lot more to scale. So there's a lot of moving parts to it, but overall I'll be a customer for sure. I'm all for it. I, th I think he was outstanding. We need that around our, because we have grass really near an oak tree and the oak tree dies from all the watering of the lawn, so uh, we'd be customers too. Very exciting. Now, for the judges, I'd like to see thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around, and then give us your vote. All right? Okay, everybody, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around, boom. Okay, we got five thumbs up. That's a first. There's a lot going on in that one. Let's bring on our next entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. People come out of prison, the rate of unemployment is staggering. And if people don't get jobs, inevitably they break the law again. We've helped thousands of people find jobs so they didn't have to break the law. I would myself serve time in prison. And when I got out of prison, I sent emails to about two or 300 venture capital firms, letting them know my story and asking them for an opportunity to work for them. I did not receive a single response except one. And that one, believe it or not, was from Tim Draper. And he was the one person who took the time and cared for a human being just a little bit to say, I'm moved by your story. Please come out. Let's set up an appointment to me. 70 Million Jobs is the first national for-profit employment platform for people with criminal records. We've helped thousands of deserving men and women find jobs, but when the coronavirus hit, we knew that we had to move on to the next phase of our plan, and that is Commissary Club, the first social network for this population. All right, our next entrepreneur is 70 million jobs. Richard, give us your pitch. My name is Richard Bronson. I am the founder and CEO of 70 million jobs and Commissary Club, which is the first 
social network exclusively for people with criminal records. There are 70 million Americans, one in three adults, that have a record in this country, and they all face incredible pain when they are released from prison. They can't find homes. They can't get a job. And when that happens, inevitably, they end up being arrested again and again. The economic cost of this broken system is staggering. The human cost, it's absolutely beyond tragic. Now, we began tackling these problems three years ago when I launched 70 Million Jobs, the first employment platform for folks with records. After going through Y Combinator, we accomplished what nobody thought we could do. We built a community of millions and we helped thousands and thousands of people get jobs. And we've created a website tech platform called Commissary Club, which is the first social network for this population we know so well. Now, in addition to employment, now we're tackling problems like housing and education and mentorships and legal and medical help and voting. We even have dating. We're taking people who have lived alone in the shadows, leading desperate lives of fear and shame, and we're bringing them out into the light and we're connecting them. I was greedy and I was stupid, period. And I paid the price by being sent to prison for a number of years. We want to do massive social good and build a big successful company. So I say to you all Drapers and whoever happens to be listening, do you want to help us change the world? Thanks so much. Great that you've rehabilitated yourself, bringing yourself out of prison. We backed a, a group called Defy. I don't know if you know of them, but they, they turn ex-convicts into entrepreneurs because they can't get jobs coming out of prison. And that is a big, there is some serious problem with our prison system, at least in the US. And they, they for some reason, have an incentive to put more people in those prisons. It's the only things the Democrats and Republicans agree upon. OK, so my question is, where do you have an advantage? Because there, uh, anyone can do this. It would be an easy thing to copy. Well, I disagree that it would be easy. It certainly wasn't easy for us. We have more than 11 million people in it. For anybody to try to duplicate that would take them years. I would respectfully assert it would behoove them to acquire us before they would try to compete with us. A, I have built big businesses, very successful businesses. B, I have unfortunate domain expertise here that few people have. C, I have worked on the nonprofit side by being a leader at Defy Ventures, the organization that you yourself have been involved with. Did you think about maybe making this a nonprofit instead of a for-profit? Well, Tim, in all due respect, I used to be rich, and I'd like to, and I'm poor now, but I'd like to be rich again. How do you attract great service providers to come to you and offer their services on your platform? Through our business, we are well known. Again, we are the only player in this huge space. And as a result, we have driven huge attention. I was just interviewed yesterday by TechCrunch, for example. So the word is out about what we're doing, and we attract really the very, very best across the board, names that you would recognize. So you are building a platform company, and in platform companies, you have consumers and you have providers. And consumers will come to you if you have great content on your site. Who is going to be creating this content? We have a section devoted entirely to creators. There are an incredible number of very, very talented people in prison and out. People who do graffiti art and who do tattoo art and are rappers and are poets and are podcasters and are chefs and clothing designers. We have created a platform for them for the first time to gain the exposure that they deserve. I'm, I'm unclear on something. The, the prisoner comes out, released, he's destitute, he needs a job, he needs friends, he needs, he pays to be part of this? 
It's 80% are men, 20% are women. Um, and women often have a much harder go of it. But, you know, he or she comes out of jail or prison. But we're not solely for the 650,000 people who were released annually. There are 70 million who were released five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, like myself, and we have no services available. So the market is much bigger than those who are just coming out. Thank you so much, Richard. This was fascinating and an interesting opportunity. And thanks for joining us on Meet the Drapers. Even the wellness app that guides you to a healthier lifestyle based on your body's needs. And we collect your body data with urine tests. This thing's going to the moon. A very new kind of a product. Vivu, it checks all the boxes for me. So since we see each other last time, we kept growing. We doubled our community two times and reached 20,000 users all around the world. And the most exciting part, we listened to your advice then, and we shipped more than 100,000 urine test strips. In Republic, just in 48 days, we closed our campaign successfully with 2,000 investors. You are the big winners. You get 150,000 more dollars at your new round. Yes, actually, uh, people are using their pre-test more during isolation. We are growing 20 to 30 percent every month. I'm personally really invested just because of, again, looking into more of my well-being. I just thought it was really cool. I do think it'll be interesting to test again in a week. It does sound pretty cool, actually. I'm going to try it just today. Everything is working well for us for now. All right, so what did everybody think of 70 million jobs? I would never vote against a guy who's served in prison and, and been released and uh, going on to honest work. Deep Curve shows how incredibly brilliant the guy is that he was able to get back on his feet and to come up with something this creative as a solution. You know what, it's very, very inspirational. It brings uh, brings tears to my eyes as I think about what he's doing and the impact he is having, it's fantastic. I think what, your question was a good one, Tim, which is, should this be a nonprofit? And at X.org, that's how we began. And uh, you know what he's doing is transforming people's lives. And the question here is that, should the people who come out of jail uh, you know, have to pay, you know, where are they going to have the money? As edX.org, I would love to work with him so that his consumers can take courses on edX for free. I would love to help him and I will, you know, be a partner with him. But, but this group of people does not have money. And so that is, as a business, I think it's going to be a little challenging, but at the same time, I think it's very, very mission oriented. I'm excited that somebody is doing this and using a for-profit model allows him, if he can figure out how to make money, to spread this. But I kind of feel like we've got to get to the root of the problem, which is that we're just incarcerating everybody. And there's got to be a better way of punishing people for doing the wrong thing. But with that, we've got to go up, sideways, down, thumbs up, Thumbs down, thumbs all around. Which way are you going? All right, thumbs up, thumbs down, all around, go. All right, four up and one sideways. I'm sideways. Thanks, everybody. And now let's bring on our third entrepreneur for the day. We're very thrilled to have yet another hero out there doing great things. So let's bring them on, but before we do, Let's see what's going on behind the scenes. When I lost my dog Mulligan, I was just devastated. Not just that I lost him, but I'd found out he'd been in pain and suffering for months. And I didn't know. 
I had a very similar situation. I lost my last pup um, really early on. I was blindsided when he got diagnosed with bone marrow cancer. Susan and I, with our love of dogs, came together and just said, we wanna do something and be able to make a difference in their lives. And that's what inspired us to work on Wagon. We have so many amazing stories from our customers of how Wagon has helped them. What really inspires us is every day hearing about these stories of how we're really making a difference in not just all of these pets' lives, but also the parents. All right, let's hear from Susan and Carrie at Wagget. Susan and Carrie, give us your pitch. I'm Susan Sirota, co-founder and CEO of Wagget. And I'm Carrie Dolan, co-founder and CMO. When I lost my dog Mulligan, I was devastated when I learned that dogs intentionally hide pain. I didn't know he needed my help and I let him down. And that is when Wagon was born. Wagon is a breakthrough in pet health and starts with our smart health collar and app. And it's way more than just a location tracker. It's proven to be a life changer by collecting enormous amounts of data about your dog and is the only dog wearable that provides early indicators of pain and illness to help those 70 million families discover potentially life-threatening health issues in your pup before it's too late. Our customer stories to date have been absolutely amazing. Waggett's alerted to a needed heart disease treatment change. It's helped avoid costly overnight stays because our customers can monitor the health vitals on their own. And it's alerted to a potentially life-threatening reaction to tick and flea meds and so many more. While these stories have been super, super inspiring, it is also great to drive customer loyalty. And the collar and app are just the entry point as the players in the pet health ecosystem really get the high value of the data that no other tracker provides. For example, pharma conducting scientific studies with Wagget accelerates the machine learning in our algorithms and getting to predictability. The actuarial data drives insurance relationships and better care. And combining nutritional information with health metrics at the in-home dog level is game-changing for manufacturers and service providers. This creates a data network effect moat where we get to provide pet parents more and more insights faster that then drives additional sales and data revenue. We've sold and shipped over a thousand collars to date and our customers are absolutely loving it. In addition, we already have over 160,000 super engaged followers and over 150 brand ambassadors from vets to daycare owners to working dog groups to trainers who have all joined our mission and who are actively referring for us. Carrie and I are the right team to bring Waggett to dogs everywhere. As we've worked together on four companies over 20 years, we know how to build and scale, and we are just incredibly grateful that we get to build such a tremendous business by saving animals' lives. It says here that your revenues are expected to hit 400,000 for this year, and then you're spiking up to 10 million next year. How, what were your revenues last month? So our revenues last month were 13,000. Our issue on our revenue this year was that we had our inventory in final assembly at Washington State when COVID hit and we were not able to get product. And so we finally are over that pump and we have our product. And as we look at our plans to sell that we have left, we'll get us to that 400,000 this year. The collar, does it do anything to the dog? Like you poke them or something? <laughs> we do not have any training things in the wagon collar. So we call the inside of the collar massage fingers tent. It, it actually is really comfortable for pups to wear. Yeah. How, how much did the collar cost? Yeah, go for $1.99 with a $10 a month subscription. The thing that's been really cool to see is out of our first customers, um, we had over 50% of them choose either an annual or two-year subscription. And how many collars have you sold? We have sold 1,113 collars to date. Um, a good majority of that was pre-sales, which is why our this month's revenue doesn't jive as much with that, um, because we did sell 900 of them in pre-sales. 
And what is the data on the dogs that you've sold the collars to? That's been the really fun part is we are getting so much data in that's allowing us to really get smarter and smarter and we will be able to turn on some additional features. So today the data that we're getting is heart rate, respiration rate, body temperature, then we're getting changes in positions, we're getting sleeping patterns, um, which really is a great place to see if there's any pain. We're getting activity patterns, time, distance, speed, intensity. We're getting calories burned and also location. Um, as we're getting smarter and smarter, we will turn on heart rate variability as well as ambient temperature. Do you get feedback from the owners of the dogs that you gave it to to begin with? We do. We have around 80% of our customers that are in a private community. We know all of their dogs' names. We know why they got their Wagget. They are just amazing and feel like they are a huge part of building Wagget because they are. And so when things happen and the Wagget gives them feedback, it's how we're getting all these stories because they're reaching out and telling us exactly what happened. You know, my question for you is, uh, you know, I will admit to being a little skeptical of whether you can take these seven or eight measurements and then you know, have a good indication that the dog's having a problem. Have you talked to vets and others to uh, validate you know, what what percentage of dog ailments can be actuated by it can be actually measured through simple measurements that you can take from a from the surface of a dog's skin? Yeah, absolutely great question. And what we talk to our vets and our customers about, and we we have vets on, who are investors in Wagget because they believe the value of the data is so good. And we have our customers who share the vet report with their vet to show off. And so we've gotten great feedback. We are really at that providing a huge value and benefit to our consumers today. We have case after case of where we actually have helped because we might not show specific illnesses, but we show restlessness. We show changes that show, oh, that dog is not feeling well, even though he's hiding it. And so that's where things are discovered. As we partner with the pharma companies and the food companies and get more and more insights, it is going to eventually get us to the point where we can even get into predictability. Yeah, how much is the subscription fee? So the subscription is um, $10 a month, $9.95 a month, if you purchase an annual subscription up front, it is $7.95 and a two year is $6.95. And so far, how many of your users have canceled their subscription? We've had 5% that we have lost along the way. Um, and I think we'll end up getting them back when they get other dogs. Um, our churn is really low until someone loses their pup and then we usually hear about it. And we are early days and so the majority of our customers have been with us as part of development and are super, super loyal. The other thing I will say is we also have a Find My Dog locator in Wagon. And while we don't believe that's differentiating, we do believe it's table stakes for dog wearable. You're hitting the right family here because uh, we've all had dogs all the way along. And Polly even had a girls club called D.O.G do only good when she was 12 years old. <laughs> Terrific. Well, thank you both for being on the show. It's fantastic. Um, makes me want to wag my tail. And uh, great, to, great to have you on the show. All right, so what did everybody think of Wagon? Wagon, I'm Wagon. What, what does everybody think of Wagon? <laughs> everybody loves dogs. A good product and probably, uh, and probably will uh, be as good as those that uh, they compete with, but they are a hell of a lot of competition. I think partnerships are gonna be key. I think trying to create yet another color is going to be hard. So whoever is able to consolidate and bring in 
all of these features into a single collar, my sense is you know, big companies like in- Invisible Pants or one of the others are going to take the market. And I think it's going to be really, really, really hard for a small player to, to try to make a dent. Asra, what do you think? So one of our bigger successes at Draper University is a cat litter company. And if there is any market that's hard to, it's hard to crack its cat litter, right? Through them, one of the things we've learned is that people are willing to spend a lot more money on the health, safety, and just like get knowledge of their pet's health and well-being. So I definitely think it's a very interesting market. I don't worry that much about competition. I think it's more about go to market on this one. Like how fast can you go to market and how fast can you acquire those initial customers and build that brand and trust with your consumers. New York City, this this would be huge because everybody meets each other in the dog park and the dogs all know each other and they would totally be like, you know, I discovered that my dog had a urinary tract infection because of this, you know, because usually you just pick up on all the signs, like they seem a little listless or they're peeing too much or they're, this way you're like, I knew it. I knew they were peeing too much. Now it's the time for the judges to decide. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. Boom. Mine's at three quarters. Asra is sort of three eighths down. Sideways. I'm from D. I- Oh, I was you're, part of you're DOG. from DOG. I'm all the way up. Anon is sideways. Uh, terrific. Well, great. Thank you very much, judges. That's terrific. Okay, now we're going to have a sum up, uh, and we're going to decide which of our three entre- entrepreneurial heroes that we saw today are going to advance to the semifinals. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to Meet the Drapers. This was really exciting and three really interesting new heroes doing really interesting things. Ira Green, we thought that was fantastic. You're making the world better by making it so the water is not wasted. And we liked it. The thing we were concerned about was how you get distribution, how you get this out and it doesn't grow uh, exponentially the way online program does. 70 million jobs, clearly we have a big problem in society. We're encaging way too many people. This is the wrong form of punishment and you are doing everything in your power to create a business model that pulls those people back into society the way you've been able to pull yourself back into society. And that's a, that's a, a real positive. Uh, the concerns were, it felt like you were um, in a lot of different places. That could be a problem because uh, not having a clear focus could be a problem because you're trying to solve all those problems for all those prisoners. Wagon, you guys are clearly into dogs. There is no question in my mind that we are going to have dog collars that give out, off all this information. So distribution wasn't really a problem in this case. The problems we thought were that the market size doesn't really get that big. Even though there are tons of dogs out there, the number that are, that are actually using collars that can, uh, that can keep them fenced in or keep them tagged, those markets aren't very big, particularly for venture capital. They're better for a cottage industry. And so we had a very difficult decision. And so once again, we need to go to the crystal ball. So here we go, to the crystal ball. Who's the winner? Eeny, beeny, wally, woody. The winner is Ira Green. Ira Green, you move forward. You're going into the the semifinals. Congratulations. The other two, make sure you get lots of crowdfunding so that you can move up and meet us all in the finale. Thank you so much. I hope you get well crowdfunded. The dogs and the, and the prisoners need you. Keep up the good work. You viewers out there, you viewers, you have an opportunity to vote 
to crowdfund these companies. And if the judges uh, judge the wrong company, you go ahead and fund that company so that they can circumvent the judges and, and you can take that company all the way to the finals, to our finale. But unlike Evergreen, and uh, the reasoning is simple. It's a clean product, solves a clear problem, it's green, and it's, it's a very, very future ready. And uh, uh, they have patents which can provide a moat for their technology and they can be licensed and taken over by Orbit or Toro or any one of them. So I think as a business, they're likely most to, to succeed. I uh, totally agree. It's a much bigger total market and, and it can be uh, sold through uh, companies that already have something to sell to the uh, to the consumer. I like their business model the most. I think there is a lot of opportunity to scale that and the data play is going to be enormous because then they can really become a marketplace for services in the future. Yeah, I mean, Aerogreen was sort of a slam dunk and the dog thing, I mean, it's my sentimental choice, but I agree with everyone else, especially because because everybody was doing this and you guys are more business oriented and I go more with the dog's point of view. There she is right there. Don't be influenced <laughs> by the other judges. I'm influenced by their knowledge. Okay, good. Well, thank you all. This is very helpful. I have a team that works very, very hard. And, you know, um, fortunately, we are rewarded every day because we are helping people every day and sometimes saving lives every day. So I think people who invested would not only feel very, very well about how much they're helping people who desperately need their help, but I think they'll enjoy a spectacular return on their investment. There are so many reasons to invest in Wagon. First off, we are obsessed with the problem that we're solving. And by choosing to support something that's so much more than just another tech company, you're joining a movement that is all about building big and a billion dollar business by doing good. And by applying the best of human technology to help our pets when they've dedicated their entire beings to helping us. You know, as entrepreneurs, like when this happens, it gives us rocket fuel just to work harder, to make the product better, to, you know, to do all the things that will delight our customers and delight our, our investors and hopefully some new investors out there too, to get more of these systems out there to people um, that they're going to love and are going to save them water. And so I think that's what I'm really excited about is just, you know, snowballing more and more people in this, in the, into this movement and hopefully making some people a lot of money too while we do it. And that great feeling of doing it also for an environmental cause. So thank you all. And, and what we do here at the end is we say, Meet the Drapers! With our tech, AI, VR, Bitcoin is the best. We'll build and work and grow with you, having fun along the way. We'll change the world for better.